I am here today to tell you why believing that homosexuality and transgenderism and all that type of thing is not of God does not equal hating those people. I do not hate those people. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, John 3.16. God also said, As for you, be fruitful and increase in number, multiply on the earth and increase upon it, Genesis 9.7. I see so often, as I know that we all do, people expressing concern that people hate homosexual people because these people believe in the Bible and what it says about homosexuality. These are all from the profile of Brenda Marie Davies of God is Grey, who has become one of my favorite people to talk about here. Uh, I just can't look away from her stuff. And she identifies as a Christian and says that she believes that God created people as, you know, homosexual and transgender and all that. But this comment right here just breaks my heart. The more you learn and grow, does it ever cause you to question the Christian faith altogether? And at the end, they say, I feel like I can't marry all the progressive ideals with the Christian faith. Does that make sense? And yes, that does make sense because so much of liberalism goes against Christianity and against God, uh, such as abortion and the belief that humans were meant to be a different gender from the body that they were born in or that they were meant to be attracted to the same sex. I am here today to tell you why believing that homosexuality and transgenderism and all that type of thing is not of God does not equal hating those people. I do not hate those people and that is a lie from the pit of hell and a false equivalency that is hurting those people and causing more division. But before we get all the way into that, I am not currently monetized anywhere and YouTube does its best to keep it that way. So make sure that you're subscribed because people are always getting unsubscribed against their will. But yeah, I'm really passionate about what I'm doing here and I feel like it's my calling from God and I'm just kind of a starving artist in the meantime. While awaiting a verdict from the disability office here in Southern California and at the mercy of the hugely messed up unemployment uh, department. So if you would like to support the work that I do here, there are going to be several ways that you can do that that will be linked in the description. For example, I am now a brand ambassador for God the Father Apparel and they have some really cool designs. I love this one. It's called On My Sleeve. And if you check out their store through my store link, which will be in the description of this video, you will get 15% off of your purchase by using discount code THOUGHTS at checkout. God the Father Apparel also offers free shipping to Canada and the U.S. on all orders of just $35 and above. So go check them out, support a good cause, and support the channel. Thank you so much. So let's talk about what the Bible says about marriage and about homosexuality. Genesis 2.18, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. Genesis 2, 21-22 Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. 2, 24 And here's another telling comment from somebody. There has already been a great falling away taking place, and a stigma created about all Christians are intolerable of others and hate anyone who is different from them. And then at the end it says, 
The church at large promote division and complacency to issues like racism, engulf hatred against LGBTQIA plus people, and promote the Republican Party platform. You'll notice that this person didn't actually explain why they felt like the church is spreading hatred against LGBTQ people, but it's probably due to stuff like this next verse that I'm going to show you. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Another way that I think that people get this idea ingrained into their minds is through what I consider, in my opinion, to be smear campaign groups on anything that goes against the agenda of the 1%. One of these smear campaign groups, in my opinion, is the SPLC. Notice they're instigating remarks here. Anti-gay groups such as Focus on the Family, most of them religiously motivated. And in another instigating remark, based on their own opinion, they call gay people enemies of the American Family Association. Because of stuff like this American Family Association having very valid concerns about Kellogg's encouraging children to pick their own pronouns and confusing them sexually when they shouldn't even be thinking about sex in general. And here's another commenter basically talking about her father and herself demonizing the church as if they all actually hate gay people. Now let's talk about all the negative stuff that goes along with choosing a homosexual lifestyle or choosing to give yourself over to being the opposite gender or some made up gender apart from the body that you were born in. Here is the situation report with a very sad statistic about transgenderism. This is what we're always pushed to. If you care for people, then you will create space where they can be who they are, and this is who they are, and it's the compassion argument. Chad mentioned uh, Walt Heyer, who we had on our show you know, many episodes ago. Uh, Walt is a biological male who transitioned to female in his 40s. I don't know what all it looks like. Um, later on, transitioned back, and now in his 80s, continues to work with folks who have transitioned and are trying to go back and dealing with all of that. Uh, he made the statement on our show that 100%, and I clarified with him, 100%, 100% of the people that he works with who have transitioned and are now experiencing that regret and trying to go back um, have endured deep trauma in their lives. So this transition process is a response to trauma. And so as we normalize this behavior, we're ignoring the trauma. So we're ignoring the real problem. And when I think about that, I think the compassion argument is why we're being told we need to accept this, but really compassionate people would confront the truth and try to help people who are actually hurting. Yes, thank you. This is exactly what I've been saying for a while now, that it's, you know, there's a very clear connections between transgenderism and trauma, all kinds of different mental health issues. Uh, for example, the statistics that I have seen and heard say that the rate of suicide in transgender people is about 40% or so, uh, and that doesn't change regardless of whether it's before or after transition or how much support they have. And people get pissed off at me when I say that these people need help with their, you know, emotional issues that led to them thinking that they wanted to be the opposite gender, as opposed to just telling them to go ahead and just do that. Yeah, it's a very backwards, warped world that we live in, uh, because people are so lied to and told that the suicide rate and everything is really all entirely just because that they're made fun of or you know, people think that what they're doing is weird. Really? Now let's take a little trip down memory lane to one of my videos from a few months ago to talk again about one of the other ways that embracing a homosexual lifestyle hurts people. It was the gay thruple. So that is a group of three men all in a relationship together here in San Diego County who all got their names onto a birth certificate recently and they are calling that a victory in the media. So the gay thruple says that it's no big deal that they are the three parents to their now two surrogate babies. But Dr. Preet Pal SB would seem to think that it is a pretty big deal. According to his article in womanjunction.com, 
mothers are naturally much better equipped to care for the needs of young children. And therefore, children who grow up in gay households will have higher risk of ending up with psychological defects that they wouldn't have had if they had gotten to grow up with their biological mother and father. As far as I can tell, this gay throuple spent $120,000 to basically bioengineer what they saw as their ideal little family, and of course also took the time to complain about their supposed oppression without probably putting much thought into how it would be for the children to grow up in that situation. This story also makes me think of a well-known passage in Proverbs chapter 3, which says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. So basically, if people didn't even think to go outside of the way that God originally designed marriage to be between a man and a woman, procreating and and supporting and complementing each other, such as the, the article mentioned, uh, and as I've always just been able to just see from living life and seeing the way that males and females differ from each other and interact and all of that. Um, if people didn't think to even try to have kids as uh, gay couples or gay throuples, those kids' lives would be a lot healthier and better. Next, according to the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, there seems to be some evidence that suggests that homosexual relationships tend to be more violent. And I've actually heard from lesbians that those relationships are more stressful than a heterosexual relationship. This is a clear sign of the relationships being unhealthy. And finally, another telltale sign that embracing the homosexual lifestyle is not a part of God's design for the abundant life that he wants you to have is the AIDS epidemic that is especially prevalent in gay men. And before you say something about how, you know, we've come so far and there's condoms and there's treatments and everything, yes, but if gay sex was, you know, a part of the original design for mankind, why would we need to take all of these precautions in order to not get sick and die? From Healthline.com, why do gay men have a higher chance of getting HIV? HIV is more common than average in men who have sex with men. In 2018, 69% of new HIV diagnoses were in gay men, bisexual men, or other MSM per the CDC. Around the world, MSM are 26 times more likely than average to contract HIV, reports UNAIDS. In the United States, gay men, bisexual men, and other MSN account for the majority of new HIV diagnoses. And this is because the chance of transmission is higher during anal sex without a condom or other barrier method compared with vaginal sex without a condom. This is because the skin around the anus is thinner than the skin around the vagina, so small tears are more likely to occur during anal sex. So all these things pretty much tell me that embracing a lifestyle apart from being the heterosexual cisgender person who God created you to be is not healthy and not part of the abundant life that God wants for you. I hope that this will encourage you and that you learn something new perhaps. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to click the thumbs up since you enjoyed the video enough to make it all the way to the end. Share with somebody else who would also be interested. Make sure that you are subscribed because YouTube keeps unsubscribing people like I said at the beginning. Have a wonderful night, afternoon, morning, evening, whatever time zone you're in. If you would like to support the channel, don't forget to check out the links in the description. And I will see you next time. Bye.